Hey folks, Kevin Chappelle here with AutoEducation.com. I've got this engine on my engine stand. I thought it'd be a good chance to go over the major components of an engine. This happens to be a V8, Chevrolet V8 from a late 70s dump truck. Um, Chevrolet is still using this engine design with uh, push rods and the camshaft actually in the block. We can go over the major components starting with the oil pump. In this case, the oil pump is actually driven by a shaft that runs to the distributor. The distributor is run off of the camshaft. Next major component is the crankshaft. It's supported by five bearings and you'll see as it spins, the connecting rods and the bearings for that are offset. So that's what gives you your stroke of the engine and controls how much the piston is going in and out of the cylinders. So there's, in this engine with a V8, there's eight rods. These are connected to the pistons with a wrist pin. And underneath these caps is a bearing material. It's actually a, a softer material than the crankshaft and it's designed to be a wear item. But ultimately there's a thin layer of oil that Ride, you know, the crankshaft rides over top of the bearing and over top of that thin layer of oil to prevent friction. On the front here, we have a timing chain. That's driving the camshaft. That's a two to one ratio. So every two rotations of the crankshaft, the camshaft is turning once. And that's what gives you your intake and compression strokes. And we'll go over that. We're going to flip the engine over here, take a look at uh, the camshaft, how that actuates the valves, and then follow the, the path of the intake into the combustion chamber and then out the exhaust. All right, I've spun the engine over. I've got the cylinder head bolted down on one side, and I've only got two of the push rods in place, but it'll allow you to see how the actual camshaft actuates the valves. This is the other cylinder head and this is the face that would be against the pistons in the combustion chamber and you can see there's two different valves. Typically the intake valve is a little larger than the exhaust and these valves are actuated. First of all they're held in place with springs to make sure that they return in the closed position. And then the rocker arm sits here and as the push rod is pushing up, it's pushing the valve in. So you'll see that action when we spin the motor over here in a little bit. In addition, I wanted to also show you the carburetor and the intake manifold as it would be bolted on. The carburetor mixes the fuel and air that then travels through the intake manifold into the individual runners and it connects to where the intake valve is and we'll see those valves being actuated in the next step. All right now that we have the intake removed you can see the four ports where that air and fuel mixture comes into your intake valve. So this is an intake valve, so is this and then two here. And then on the other side there are exhaust ports. So it'd be this one, this one, this one, and this one. So the air has to come in through the intake port, out through the exhaust. So you can see as we turn the crankshaft, you can see the pistons going up and down in the bore. If we watch, we're gonna see this valve Sorry, the exhaust valve opening. So we're going to move until we see the intake. So this is the intake stroke. The intake valve is opening. This piston is traveling down the board just like this piston is. And as it's doing that, the piston is sucking in air and fuel in through the intake port. Once that closes, now the piston starts coming up. Same thing, this piston is doing pretty much the same thing that this one is. 
And as it gets to the top, dead center, that's squeezing that fuel and air, and it's compressing it. And once it gets to the top, the spark plug fires, that gives you your ignition. It's basically an explosion that just pushes the piston right down. Now as it comes down, the intake valve opens and lets the exhaust out. So now the intake valve or the exhaust valve is open, intake is closed, and the piston is now traveling up and expelling all of those burned gases right out the exhaust manifold. Once that's done, hits top dead center, now it's on the intake stroke again. So the intake valve will actuate. Air will come in. This is sucking it through the intake. And then you're on your compression where both valves are closed. The piston's coming up. Bang. Explodes, comes back down. And then your exhaust valve opens. Pushes out all the exhaust. Closes. Opens the intake, sucks more gas and fuel, or air and fuel in, and back to your compression again. All right, so I'm taking apart the engine. I wanted to show you briefly. I've got all, I've got six out of the eight pistons removed. You can see the journal where the crankshaft rides, and Here's one of the pistons that came out. And you remove the pistons by taking the nuts off the end of the connecting rod here. And then this end cap comes off. I mentioned before about the bearings. This is the actual bearing. It's inserted in here. It has a little notch that lines up. And then there's also a matching half on this side. This is your piston. You've got two compression rings that are sealed against the cylinder. So when the piston's traveling down on the intake stroke, it's actually pulling a vacuum and that keeps everything sealed so that you're not getting oil coming past the rings and into the combustion chamber. The third ring at the bottom here is the oil ring and that really keeps the oil under control, keeps it from getting up to these top two rings. And then as the piston's coming up on the compression stroke, these top two rings seal also and creates that high pressure just before combustion. The piston itself is typically cast aluminum, it can also be forged, and then the connecting rod here mounts the rod, the wrist pin connects the connecting rod to the piston and that allows it to rotate. All right, now that the pistons are removed, you can see the, the crankshaft is the only thing left here on the bottom end. The oil pump's been removed. And like I mentioned before, we've got five main bearings. You have to excuse my dogs. Uh, again, just like the rods, we've got an insert bearing here and should pop out. There we go. If we wipe that off, we'll probably see some significant wear. I'm not sure how many miles this engine had, but you can definitely see lines in there. And a lot of that's probably from that dirty oil and not changing it, a lot of contamination. That carbon is, is pretty hard. And also there's metal shavings from wear. And without changing the oil and the filter, you're gonna start getting these worn bearings as well. So once the main bearings are removed, the crankshaft basically free to come out. I took the, the timing chain off over here as well.
And I tell you what, from this uh, engine not having the oil changed, it, it's got a horrible smell. It's like burned oil. And you can kind of see the sludge here. Um, this engine was not taken care of. And I shot a little quick little video, kind of showed some of the gunk and stuff that was in the, the valley pan and the, the valve covers, under the valve covers and the heads. So now the, the crankshaft's free to move. It'll come right out and there'll be a matching bearing in the block to match that cap. And you can also see from here, you can see the camshaft, which is underneath. So this engine is getting scrapped, so that's why I'm taking it apart. Uh, I'm not being real careful about it. I wanted to show you the main bearings and then uh, we'll take the crank out here. And you get a good shot, I'll, I'll reposition the camera. You should be able to see, well, maybe even where we are. But if you see down inside here, let me get around here. This is the actual camshaft. You'll see it spinning. And you'll see those lobes on the camshaft that actuate the lifters. And that camshaft gets oiled by the pistons slapping around there. The connecting rods actually have little flat areas that sling oil up on the camshaft. You can see the rear bearing here. Excuse my camera work. And uh, there's also what's called the rear main seal. Keeps the oil from leaking out.